Welcome, everybody, to Inside the IFL Week 8. I'm your host, Todd Tryon. I thank you for taking a few minutes out of your week uh, to come into my home and the home office and check out what's going on inside of our great league. We had a huge weekend again this last weekend, jam-packed, 16 games. It did not disappoint. We're going to unwrap Week 7. Uh, we're going to show you some uh, plays of the week from Week 7. I've got a great interview uh, with Coach Corey Roberson with the hot Green Bay Blizzard. Uh, we're going to talk week, week eight, and I got a few things uh, I just want to discuss with you guys. So stay tuned with me. Shouldn't be a long show. This is just a sneak peek inside of what's going on inside of our great league as we got another full weekend uh, ahead of us. But first, let's talk about our crazy week seven as we had games going on three nights, eight different games. Uh, it started with Friday night. We had Iowa looking for that first win going up against Green Bay, in Green Bay. They always put a great crowd out there. This game did not disappoint. Green Bay snuck out with the win to stay hot 40-33. to 33. Uh, We had a second game, and uh, this game was unbelievable. San Antonio at Frisco. All right, And uh, on paper, Frisco was a heavy favorite, but that's why they played the games. This is the first game between these two interstate rivals, which I, I would say now our rival. They turn around and play each other this upcoming weekend, so pretty interesting. Frisco jumped out, but Sam Casanova went absolutely nuts, throwing over 200 yards, eight touchdowns, as they came back late to upset Frisco 54-52 for the Gunslingers, second win in a row, pretty impressive. All right, Saturday, we saw three games for you. First one, we had Duke City going to the undefeated Vegas. Duke City looking for their first win. Vegas looking to stay undefeated. First half, extremely competitive. At halftime, it was only four-point difference. Second half, Vegas defense flexes their muscles uh, and, and hold Duke City to just three points. Vegas gets out of there with the win, 42-27, to set up a big showdown of undefeateds this coming weekend that we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, we had Massachusetts at Sioux Falls being played in Fargo, right? And so Sioux Falls volunteered uh, to give up a home game or move their home game to Fargo as we sit there and we test out that market. Uh, as we're testing out the arena, the Shields Arena was a, a, a perfect venue for what we're trying to do. Went up there, met some great people, saw a great game, and uh, we Sioux Falls was looking for their first win. And Mass was looking to rebound from their only loss. And uh, it, it was competitive all night, and Massachusetts snuck out of Fargo with the win, 43-38. And then our last game, Northern Arizona traveled to Tucson. Northern Arizona's got sneaky hot. And Tucson, uh, they, they've lost a few in a row. So this was an intriguing game. Northern Arizona jumped out pretty good and held off a late, late charge from Tucson to get out of there with the 34-31 win, uh, Northern Arizona. Still with just one loss. And then Sunday, we had three games for you. The first one was a straight-up shootout. It, it saw Tulsa going up two quad cities. And, uh, you know, Tulsa had an unbelievable game. Daniel Smith went nuts over 200 yards. He had eight touchdowns. Uh, his his number one target, who remains this year, uh, Alexis Rosario, had over 100 yards, three touchdowns. And they got out of there with a the win, 72-59 to did Tulsa. Two other games, Jacksonville looking for their first win, went to Arizona. Uh, it, it was renewing an old rival. And a very competitive first half. Uh, looks like Arizona made some great adjustments in the second half uh, to get out of there with the win. Their second win in a row, they got back to 500. Jacksonville still looking for their first win. Arizona winning that game, 55-35. And then the last game of the night, Bay Area uh, going to San Diego. Last weekend, it was a shootout, 53-50. This past weekend, it saw Bay Area jump up 32-6 to at half. San Diego made a huge comeback in the second half, shutting out Bay Area to bring it back to, to uh, within 1.33-32, 10 seconds to go. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But Bay Area remains undefeated to set up a huge showdown this weekend uh, with undefeated Vegas. Uh, Bay Area wins that game 33-32. So that closes out an outstanding weekend. We had all 16 game, or sixteen teams in action. Uh, but don't listen to me. Why don't you guys check out Week 7 Plays of the Week.
comes in motion. Snap to Myler. Another shot play going for Ballard. Caught! Flag! Doesn't matter! Touchdown, Harry Ballard! Coming down with it. Second down here, second a long nine for Northern Arizona after a very short game. And here's Jones, and it is wide open, and the play is a touchdown as the Wranglers go Maldonado with the TD catch. And it's first down for the Steam Wheelers as he looks to add under the lead. The ball is out, and it's picked up for a touchdown. Leon Smalls picked. Not the last one up to about the 12 yard line. Going to come up and field this one around the six. Got a hole, he gets through the first hole, he gets through the second hole, and he's going to take it all the way for a touchdown. No flags. The low line drive from Macias goes right through the wickets of Jeff Carr, and watch out, this could be a rouge. Carr just has to cover, and the Nighthawks add a point. Hall, oh. loves one for the end zone. Bell is there for a touchdown. All right, Wilson has Marshall tipped and intercepted by the deep man. And that interception by Banks, and it's fumbled, and it's recovered by Dallas Reigns. This angled ball goes high end over end. Chance for Flowers to return from his own four. And the former UNLV Rebel down the sideline. Flowers with a cutback. He might go. Jericho Flowers. Touchdown. I just signed after an open tryout at San Jose State. This is a long one from back at his own 16-yard line. It's on its way, and it is good. I'm still stuck on Reed Brotherton's <laughs> comment there, okay? Hey, how about the deuce? That one's going to go through and count for two. King takes a snap handoff. Washington up the middle. A lot of space for Washington. Spins his way into the end zone. Touchdown. I'll tell you what, this is a Nighthawks team that has scored touchdowns on 19 straight drives, but like you said, everyone's oh. getting involved. That streak comes to an end. An interception. Malik McDowell takes it right to the edge of the end zone and is in. Diggenhart to throw, fires, looking for wow. Redding, Get but going. it's intercepted. He's in forward motion, snap to take three man rush. Pressure's on over the middle pass. Intercepted it is! Sintel Williams, he's still going inside the five, off the ricochet. Sintel Williams. Connor lobs it for the end zone. It's up for grabs, oh. and it's stolen away by Teo Redding for a touchdown. Wow! Got two receivers stationary to his left now across the formation and running and into the end zone is Marshall. Is it a touchdown? It is a touchdown. Sugar Skulls, Jalen Marshall. Neal fires it up. Neal and it's caught for a touchdown. JT Stokes. Second and goal. Play fake. Intercepted in the end zone. King Gladney Jr. picked it off. Most importantly, ball at the 14-yard line for Taz Wilson. He's going to fire it high, and it is intercepted by the Wranglers. And that is going to be returned by Kevin Hyde all the way down. Drive starting back at their own 13-yard line. Two receivers in motion. Plenty of time looking for Jackson in double coverage. He's got it! Oh, touchdown! Strike force! Low snap, Wilson rolls right, fires it, oh. and caught, one-handed catch, touchdown, Jalen Marshall, Sugar Skulls, cut the lead. We've had a lot of action in less than a quarter. Onside kick, and a recovery, Duke City has it, what a turnaround. Fresh off the turnover on the last drive. Good cut there by Vander. There he goes across midfield. One man to beat. Vander, touchdown. Power, blitz comes. End zone, intercepted. James Caesar. 
the great defense they're facing. Davis with the pressure coming from the middle, fires into the end zone, and simultaneous possession, who's got it? It is Arthur Jackson, the third! You gotta be kidding me! I think people are disarmed and much more uh, enjoyed by that fact. The humanity of the moment. Hey, look at the return straight up the middle. Start the second half, and that one is going to go all the way to the house for Jacksonville. That's been a rough second quarter. That's been their best. They're a plus 21 point differential in the second quarter is coming into the game. And now Johnson is picked for a second time. Penalty. It moves Quad City up to the 19 yard line in the end zone. Toss! And did he come down with it? Run! With a minute left, have a 13-point lead on the Steam Wheelers. This one will be vacuumed in and run back. And there comes a run back inside the 15, the 10, the touchdown for Easton. And Sneed winds up, has a man wide open, and what a catch! What a touchdown, Jamal Miles! All right, guys, welcome back from our Plays of the Week. I've got a great guest here, Coach Corey Roberson. Uh, he's got his team flying high right now, coming off of four wins. Uh, he's in his fifth season as the head man up there in Green Bay. Uh, but Corey, I don't, I don't want to take a, I don't want to tell your bio if you would, for the listeners out there who don't know who coach Corey Roberson is. I mean, tell them your journey, where, where you've been at through the league, how long you've been in and, and how you got yourself, uh, to 2024, four and one. Yeah. Uh, where, where it all started. Yeah. So, you know, I, I jumped into this game right away as a player back in 2002, uh, down with an NIFL back way back then and uh with the with the Tupelo Fire Ants and uh made my way over in my year number two uh made my way over in the Badlands out there in South Dakota Bismarck area um and then the rest is history uh ended my career plan in 2010 with the Green Bay Blizzard and uh started coaching Coach Fuller Hall of Famer um uh, shout out to him he uh gave me my first coaching job in the IFL um as an assistant coach here in Green Bay in 2012 and uh, and, you know, just been through a few coaches, uh, always been an assistant coach. Um, and then in 2019, the Trinklers gave me an opportunity uh, to become the full time head coach. Well, actually in 2018 um, and then in 2019, they made me the full time head coach. And, and here we are, um, 2024. Um, yeah. You know, and, and coach, love your story. I mean, you highlight what our league's all about. It's a platform to advance your life. You you took advantage of it as a player, worked into an assistant coach, and, and now the head coach making uh, a career out of it. And so it's what the IFL stands for, and it's great seeing stories like yours. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Happy to be here. Uh, okay, next question. So fifth year, you're in your fifth year. What's been your best moment and your worst moment as a uh, <laughs> IFL head coach? Uh, you always remember your first, right? You remember the first loss. You remember the first win. Um, so best moment, uh, I would probably say your former team, you know, finally getting Green Bay over the hump. And, uh, I mean, granted we playing them this weekend, so that might be something else coming up, but, uh, it was, it was for the first time in Green Bay history, finally beating them a few years ago, um, a couple of years ago. And, you know, that was, that was probably one of the, the better moments of, of getting Green Bay, uh, you, you know, to making it more competitive than the, I think we was on like a 16, 17 game losing streak versus Sioux Falls. So um, that, that was always, that was, that was a good one. Well, worst, I'm guessing worst, if, if coach Johnson has his chance Friday night, he will not squib it late. Is, is what I'm <laughs> guessing won't happen. But anyway, go ahead. Worst moment. Yeah. No, Corey, Corey. Yeah. You go ahead and squib it, baby. Go ahead and squib it to us so we can. <laughs> um, the, uh, the worst moment I, I would just say, you know, uh, the, the recruiting right and, and starting over always starting over that that as a the process of building a team and starting over and and, and having a, a new position at the the number one position at quarterback that would probably be uh tough and i would say in 2022 you know we we struggled a little bit we struggled at that position and 
um, you know, until late, until, you know, we got rolling a little bit, but it, it was a struggle. So, you know, I would say, you know, at some points in that 2022 season and maybe even 2021, you know, with, with first year uh, quarterbacks at, at that time, um, you know, that was would probably be some some headaches for me. You know, it, it is a quarterback driven league. I don't need to tell you this. And it looks like right now, I mean, as long as you can keep your guy healthy, you get yourself a a, a pretty good one. And, and it kind of leads into my next one. You're four and oh, or four and one. Uh, I think it's your hottest start as a, as a head coach. Uh, what's different about this team and what do you contribute this start to? Uh, I, we, we stay with that position, right? Always having a returner at that position. You know, you're not starting over from scratch. So you could, you able to hit, hit the ground running uh, when, when you, when you get to camp. But um, I think uh, I, I would contribute it to the, uh, the amount of uh, the, the right guys that we brought back from last season. Uh, you know, they, they were, I mean, they were young, but, you know, they grew up and they, they kind of they know the game now. So bringing the right guys back at certain positions, at key positions, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball, that that has helped out tremendously. Um, a little bit of recruiting in the offseason, <laughs> that goes a long ways as well. But, uh, you know, start at the quarterback, the center, and then the right guys on, on the other side of the ball. Well, you're doing something right, Coach. You're off to a great start. Your defense has been outstanding. Looking forward to uh, Friday night's game uh, against Sioux Falls. You've been around the IFL for quite some time. Have you ever seen the competition this thick? It's, it's been great. It's this year, I mean, you know, kudos and hats off to all the uh, the ownership and, and the coaches. Uh, their recruiting process has been great. You know, you look at some of the teams that, uh, you know, don't have wins. And trust me, I've been in that situation uh, before. Um, and, and, you know, talk about Iowa, right? How many one point or one score games, you know, losses they have this year. So they have a lot. So um, it, it, it's the parity of the players and the, and the, and the teams is, is, uh, is top notch. Um, I think, uh, you know, years ago when, when I played and maybe when you played, you know, we could talk about the quarterback play. We had some great quarterbacks back in the day. Uh, but, uh, you know, these young, 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 young guys, they are, they are pretty athletic and, and it's spread out throughout the league, and you could tell. Yeah, the competition has risen since you and I played. I'll oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. Okay, so Friday night, uh, 7.05 kickoff, Green Bay traveling to uh, Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls is one of those teams looking for their first win. I mean, you guys date back. You're the oldest rival in our league. Uh, you can throw the records out uh, when, when, when you play this game. Uh, but I mean, do the records really mean anything come Friday night once you get kicked off? No, no, not at all. I mean, four and one, I mean, you know, it's any given game day, uh, you know, they, we talk about one or two plays last game, that, that game could have went a different, different way, uh, when we played, I mean, in every game that we've played them in the past few years, um, you talk about one or two plays. So, you know, the records don't matter. You have to, it's what team's going to show up who's going to make the least amount of mistakes and, 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 and uh, capitalize on the other team mistakes. So that's, that's, who's going to win this game. And, you know, um, I know Andre uh, coach fields over there is getting them guys prepared. You know, Sioux Falls has lost all five of their games by less than a score. And yeah. so uh, I expect this game to be no different. Uh, we'll see what happens. Tune in Friday night, seven Oh five free to you guys, YouTube caffeine TV. Last question for you. And I'll let you get back to game plan on August 17th is the IFL National Championship game in Vegas. I've seen you there the last couple of years as a spectator uh, slash coach. What would it mean to you to get your team to the big game? Oh, man, that's a, a great question. I, you know, first, it'd be great for us to get the organization there uh, for the first time in, in, in our, our uh, history in the IFL. Uh, for for the blizzard and especially for Larry and Kathy ownership group, you know they do things the right way. Um, so that that'd be that'd be a great feeling uh, for us to get there. Uh, me personally, uh, you know I've been in the championship game, but not only we want, want to get there, we want to win it. So uh, you know that being a spectator, seeing how you know the ins and outs, and, and you guys, the whole IFL as a whole, put on a great show um, there. Um, that's one <laughs> I would recommend whomever if they love the game to go but uh as a you know i would love to be the guys in there interviewing you know having our guys interviewing in, in preparation to go out there and uh, win the championship you know absolutely guys tickets will be going on sale here soon for our big weekend the trinklers ryan hobson those guys do an outstanding job you're a reflection of them you're doing an outstanding job off to a hot start 
Four and one Friday night, guys. Tune into this game. Should be a great one. Coach Roberson, thank you for your time and uh, look forward to watching you this weekend. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Another great interview with uh, head coach there, Corey Roberson of the Green Bay Blizzard as they are set to travel up to Green Bay. Uh, we'll talk about that or travel up to Sioux Falls on Friday night. We'll talk about that here in a second. But just a couple things that I wanted to uh, address or talk about. Uh, first one was uh, our San Diego and Bay Area incident. Uh, we had some family members or fans get into uh, uh, a tussle in, in the crowd and uh, the security was slow to react. Uh, we had some players thinking they were doing the right thing, probably doing the right thing, uh, but nonetheless, go up into the stands, make sure everything is good. And uh, when it comes to our rules, under no circumstances can fans enter, I'm sorry, can players enter the stands uh, because it puts the player at, at, at risk uh, and, and it could potentially uh, turn into a bigger issue. And so that's kind of what we had. Uh, thankfully, it didn't turn into a big deal. Uh, we do suspend players when they enter the stands, depending on the circumstances, dictates how long they're suspended. Uh, but just wanted to point out that issue that we did have there in, in isolated incident. Guys, this doesn't happen real often. It, it happened in that game, and, and it marred what was really an outstanding game. Uh, the other thing I want to point out, and it's because I listen to you guys, is our transactions are back live. Uh, they were as of Sunday night. And uh, there was a great reason why we, we took them down for a while. Uh, there's a lot of coaches that aren't coaching in the IFL that uh, aren't as good of coaches and recruiters as the IFL coaches, right? And they simply use our transactions uh, to, to, as a way of recruiting. And uh, now everybody's rosters are set, so everything should be good. And, and we've got our stuff back up there. And, you know, the good coaches or the great coaches of the IFL will continue to recruit the great players and we'll post those transactions for you. But also I want to highlight uh, a question out there in, in regards to uh, suspension of players. Uh, as, as we have a rule in our league that if you sign an IFL contract, so if you sign a contract for the 2024 season, there is only three leagues that we view as exempt, meaning that you can turn around and sign a, a contract in an exempt league with no consequences to the IFL. That is the NFL, the CFL, and the UFL. Any non-exempt league that a player may sign with is, is a one year suspension from our league. And so if you sign an IFL contract and then you turn around and sign, sign a contract in a non-exempt league, it suspends you for a year in our league. And it's because your contract needs to mean something. Your signature and commitment needs to, needs to mean something. And so if you've not signed an IFL contract in 24 or you've been released and you join a non-exempt uh, you sign a contract in a non-exempt league, and then you choose to come back uh, into our league, perfectly fine. Uh, but your signature needs to mean something. And so I know some of you guys have questioned that rule. Just wanted to clarify it for you uh, so, so there's no gray area in, in regards to that. So week eight, let's go. We got 12 games. No, we don't. We've got six games, 12 teams uh, in action. That means four teams are on a bye. We start Friday night, Green Bay at Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls has been within one score of every single loss, and uh, I think this is going to be an outstanding competitive game. Don't know who's going to win at the end, but Sioux Falls looking for that first win. Green Bay, Corey Roberson, as you just heard him, looking to stay hot. 7.05 kickoff. Jacksonville, a quick turnaround, is going to Tulsa. They finally get out of the west, and they're back into the east, uh, playing some Eastern Conference teams, but Tulsa's hot, and uh, we're going to see what's going to happen Friday night. Once again, 7.05 Central kickoff. Saturday, four games, all right, four games. It starts off with an outstanding game. It's a rematch of uh, this past weekend. Frisco is making the three-hour trip down south to San Antonio. And we're going to see, is San Antonio really for real? I think we're going to find out on Saturday night, 6.05 kickoff. Quad Cities looking to rebound, going to Iowa. That is always a great rival game. Iowa looking for their first win. You could throw the records out the door. This will be a great game, 7.05 kickoff. And then two more, late on the West, Northern Arizona taking their hot uh, four-game winning streak to San Diego. San Diego's got two tough losses by a total of four points to the undefeated Bay Area Panthers. We're going to see what happens. Northern Arizona at San Diego, 8.05 Central kickoff. And then what could be the game of the weekend? Uh, they're all great games of the weekend, but this one sees two undefeated from the West, powerhouses going at it. Vegas takes their undefeated record 
to Bay Area as Bay Area is undefeated, and we're going to see who's going to walk out of there uh, as the only undefeated on the west side. Both teams 5-0, and Vegas at Bay Area, 8.05 Central kickoff, going to be a great game. Once again, all our games are live to you free. YouTube, Caffeine, uh, check out our socials to see which Caffeine channel those are on. But it's going to be a great weekend. Guys, that wraps up week eight uh, of Inside the IFL. I want to, on behalf of all the uh, IFL members and myself, thank you guys so much for your support, tuning into our product, and looking forward to another great weekend. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank <laughs> you.